Hi there, this is a short guide on the boss Gorefist in Remnant from the Ashes. Gorefist is a notorious boss in Remnant for decimating new players and even being able to humble those who've played through the game multiple times. Either him or the boss Shroud will appear in your playthrough as your first boss. This guide will be done on a character with 25 trait points and gear score 20 on Apocalypse. I'm keeping the trait points low for now because this is likely a boss you will encounter early, and gear score 20 actually raises the difficulty in comparison to lower gear scores. And I'll only be using gear appropriate for this stage in the game. Keep in mind that this guide is still perfectly applicable to you, whether you're on your first or fifth playthrough. I'm just trying to make sure that these guides stay meaningful, no matter what gear you have. Gorefist will usually begin the fight by charging directly at the player while dragging his sword on the ground. This is an intimidating attack, but truthfully, it's one of his least dangerous. You can simply just walk around his side and he'll miss every single time. This will work any time he charges like this, not just at the beginning of the fight. The rest of Gorefist's moveset mostly consists of rudimentary swings and smashes, none of which are too difficult to dodge with some practice. His punches and turnaround attacks can be really hard to read, but as long as you try not to get too close, it's rare that you'll have to contend with these. The same can really be said about the rest of Gorefist's moveset too. As long as you stay a healthy distance away, he'll have a hard time reaching you. Gorefist does, however, have a very threatening 3-hit combo that can be very difficult to dodge, especially in heavier armors. The easiest way to tell that he's getting ready to unleash the pain train is when he jogs toward you with his sword over his shoulder. The most consistent way to avoid this is to stay out of range, but this isn't always an option. If you find that you need to dodge the combo, backstep the first swing, and then roll around his left for the second. The third swing will miss. Backstepping or rolling repeatedly generally won't help you to dodge all three attacks, not even in light armors. That's basically all Gorefist himself has to throw at you, but mastering his moveset won't guarantee you victory. His exploding adds are just as, if not more dangerous than Gorefist himself. Gorefist has a pretty clear telegraph of when he spawns his exploders. He'll glow red and let out a sort of war cry, and then grow some thorns for a short time. This is your cue that his minions are on their way. They spawn in waves of two, although more will spawn if you're playing with others. These little shits do heavy damage, as I'm sure you know, and they need to be taken care of as quickly as possible. Focus on them instead of the boss until they're all dead, otherwise you're at huge risk of getting nuked by one, and infected if you even survive. They make a buzzing noise to help you keep track of them, so if you hear that sound, stay vigilant. The exploders unfortunately add a bit of a luck element to this fight. Things may be significantly easier or harder depending on a number of factors, like how quickly they reach you, what direction they come from, if they're grouped up or not, etc. You can offset this with practice and good awareness, but it's just about impossible to get it down to a science. This is especially difficult because they can detonate one another or be slapped into your face by Gorefist himself. The best advice I can really offer about these exploders is to just be mindful of where they are and decide whether it's best to shoot them from afar or wait for them to trigger their explosion and roll through it. When it comes to deciding your equipment for this fight, you probably don't have a lot at your disposal. One or two trinkets at the most, and a handful of armors, weapons, and mods. I would recommend either the scrapper or hunter set, paired with either the coach gun or the shotgun. Both armor sets offer a good damage bonus, with scrapper providing a better bonus at the cost of having a heavier roll. The cultist set could have some application here, but I still think that the other sets would have better utility for this encounter. And you'll likely only have two pieces of drifter set at the moment, so while it's not a bad set, you won't be able to take advantage of its full bonus. The coach gun and shotgun are both fine weapons, and this boss is generally a close quarters encounter, meaning that they really get a chance to shine here. Although it's a strong weapon, the hunting rifle doesn't quite have the same stopping power as its alternatives, as its strength lies in its range, accuracy, and weak spot multiplier. For your sidearm, either the repeater pistol or submachine gun will function just fine. I recommend using the Hunter's Mark and Hot Shots as your weapon mods on your sidearm and long gun, respectively. Hot Shot provides a noticeable damage buff while applying additional damage over time, and Hunter's Mark can be used to keep track of the exploders through walls in order to better assess the situation. Make sure to be proactive about keeping Mark charged, as it is a game-changing buff that can make or break this boss fight. Lastly, try to come prepared with oil skin tonic, bandages, and ammo boxes. I know at this stage of the game, money is not easy to come by, but infection and bleeding can be debilitating debuffs, and this boss is tanky enough that running out of ammo might be a concern. If you have a lot of oil skin tonic, use one before starting the fight to increase your rot resist, as this will make the exploders deal significantly less damage to you for the entire boss fight. That's all the advice I have today for taking on Gorefist. 
I hope you found some useful information, and if you're looking for more boss guides, I do plan on making more in the future. Good luck on your boss encounters, and have an excellent day.